Hey, what's going on? Today, we're gonna talk about how to check your credit report for mistakes. But before we get started, thank you for checking out our channel. Whether it's your first time here or you're a regular subscriber, we are so happy to be able to help you on your journey to live your American dream. It's one of my passions to help families and individuals build wealth through investing specifically in real estate. I do, full disclosure, run a mortgage company called Waymaker Mortgage. So if you're looking for support in acquiring property, we would love to help you on that journey. But today we're specifically focused on how to help you find mistakes on your credit report and correct them. So we're going to give you some very valuable information here over the next few minutes. I have one ask of you, though. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please click that subscribe button. It helps us with the YouTube algorithm to get these videos out there to folks. If you find this useful, please share it. In fact, I would love it if you would share this with three people who you know in your sphere of influence that could use this information and apply it to their advantage. And also comment below. Let's make this interactive. I would love to interact with you, answer any questions that you have, comments, et cetera. All right, let's get right down to it. How to check your credit report for mistakes. So I'm gonna pop this up on the screen here. There are three reasons that you will wanna check your credit report at least one time a year, right? You wanna look for mistakes and fix the ones that could hurt your credit score. This is really important because a lot of folks that we talk to, believe it or not, um, they find mistakes on their credit report or things that they thought were handled already when they go to purchase a home. And purchasing a home is just one aspect of what you need to have great credit for. As you know, if you purchase a vehicle and you use an auto loan or you need to take out credit for any other reason, your credit's gonna be reviewed. A lender's gonna look at how you have used your credit. And if there are mistakes on there at that time, or if there's things on there at that time that aren't accurate, it's gonna be too late because you're gonna need that credit and you're not gonna be able to get it. So then you have to go back and fix it then. So proactively, you wanna look for mistakes and errors once a year. Also, you wanna ensure that your credit information is up to date. What do I mean by that? Did you pay off a car? Did you pay off a boat? Did you pay off a house and it's still reporting? We just spoke with somebody in our office the other day and he said uh, four months ago, he had paid off an auto loan. It was still reporting to his credit. Now as a mortgage lender, you got a good lender on your side, they can figure out how to help you around that, but you wanna check this stuff on the front end. And number three, guard yourself against identity theft. Friends, it's a real thing. There's a lot of folks out there that experience identity theft. I can't remember the statistic, but it's millions of Americans year over year, and you wanna make sure you're protecting yourself against it. Get out in front of it, all right? So next thing we're gonna look at here, whoopsie, don't know what I did there. Hey, hey, hey. All right, so here are some of the most common errors that you may find when you're looking at your credit report. I'm gonna blow this up. So first of all, loans are credit card accounts that you never open. This is a big one, especially in the identity theft arena. You might find something on there that you just simply, it's not yours. Uh, or conversely, you might find something you forgot about. Um, so it's important that you look for these things. This is a big one, misspelled names, social security numbers, uh, wrong addresses or phone numbers. Gosh, I can't tell you how many times we have run into somebody who's like, oh my goodness, that's incorrect. We've got to get it fixed. Accounts with late payments that are an error. If you didn't pay it late, you don't want it reporting late because one of the top five aspects of credit scoring is your payment history. In fact, that's the number one aspect of having a good credit score. Incorrect loan balances. Again, this is a big one, especially if you've made a principal payment, a principal principal only uh, payment to be applied to your mortgage or another installment account like a vehicle loan. You want to make sure that your balances are up to date and correct. Incorrect credit limits. So why would this be an issue? Well, specifically, again, one of those top five factors to having a great credit score is your credit utilization. So if your credit limit is not showing properly, let's say your credit limit on your Chase card shows at $5,000 and you're carrying a balance of $2,000 month over month. Well, simply by fixing the credit limit, let's say it's supposed to be 10,000, but it's showing at five, fixing that credit limit is gonna boost your score tremendously because you're gonna go from using 40% of your limit to 20% of your limit. And by the way, little juicy nugget info here, you wanna be using 30% or less of your credit card limits uh, because that utilization is gonna help you to have top tier credit scoring. All right, incorrect open or closed accounts. I referenced this a few minutes ago. It happens more often than you realize. 
accounts that are open. Maybe you stopped by a store and they offered you a store credit card so you could save 20% that day. And you said, sure, why not? You got the credit card, you paid it off and you thought you were done with it. But nope, that account stayed open and you wanted it closed. Well, this is where you might find one of those incorrect accounts. Or again, hate to say it, but identity theft is real, friends. All right. Incorrect delinquency dates. This is a big one, too, because if you did happen to have a delinquency and it did happen and it is accurate, well, you want to make sure that your dates on your delinquency are correct, because specifically if you had a late on a mortgage or an auto loan, that can hold you back from getting new loans in the future. And there's what's called a seasoning period that must happen from the time of your most recent delinquency until you can obtain financing again. So check your delinquency dates and then duplicate accounts listed. This is one we see very frequently because of the three main credit bureaus, uh, Equi uh, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. That's a mouthful. Experian, Equifax, TransUnion, the three major credit bureaus. And all of them are using typically what's called the Fair Isaac or FICO scoring model. It's a bunch of different models within FICO, but most of them are using that same model to report your scores. And if you've got duplicate accounts listed, you talk to a mortgage lender and that mortgage lender is going to immediately see that your debt to income ratio is higher than it should be because you got duplicate accounts. Now, they're doing a good job for you. They're going to help you get that fixed. But this is something that you can do on your own to make sure your credit is completely optimized. All right, let's talk about what do you do when you find a mistake on your credit report? So the first thing you're going to want to do is send a letter to both the credit bureau and the creditor. Okay. The credit bureaus, I should say bureaus, all three and the specific creditor. Now, obviously if it's just a mistake on Experian, then you're only sending a letter to Experian, TransUnion, Equifax, follow suit and the creditor themselves. Let's say it's Synchrony Bank with JCPenney. Um, store credit card. You can explain why you think the information is an error. We'll give you a tip here on how we can help you with that uh, towards the end of the video. Then you want to explain what you think is wrong and why. Provide backup documents if you have them. Now, I've seen this many times where uh, somebody that uh, is a borrower looking to obtain a mortgage says, well, I talked with the creditor and they said they would do this regarding that debt or that trade line. However, the, the, the report gets viewed, um, the report gets reviewed and that whatever that was didn't happen. Let's say they said they were going to remove an erroneous late. Well, if you have proof of that conversation in email form, which by the way, folks always get proof. If you're talking to a creditor, always get proof. It's very helpful. Then when you're corresponding with them, providing this proof is certainly going to help. And it's going to help um, if you're providing that to the credit bureaus. If you have a copy of your credit report, include a copy of only the relevant account you're disputing. I feel like this is an important thing to note because you really only want to show them that which you want them to see, right? Um, you don't necessarily want to specifically show uh, TransUnion what Experian is reading and Equifax what TransUnion is reading. You want to show them the relevant information. And for the creditor, it's the same thing, just the relevant information. You don't necessarily want to send that creditor the full report because they only need to see the information that you're um, disputing. All right. So then in your letter, you're going to ask that the information be corrected. Sounds pretty obvious, right? Uh, never, ever, ever send your original documents. So the original credit report you've obtained, wherever you've obtained it from, that's yours. Make a copy or send an electronic copy. A lot of times you got to send these letters via USPS through the mail. Keep a copy of your dispute letter handy and mail with some form of a delivery confirmation receipt. Now, if you're doing this manually and you're not using somebody to assist you, which we're going to talk about in a minute, but if you're doing this on your own, you're going to want to find out the credit bureau's PO boxes that accept certified mail. Send it via certified mail so you can verify receipt and you know when somebody's received it, you can even follow up on it if you need to. All right, so then after this, what happens next? Well, here's the thing. Creditors and credit bureaus have a certain time period to respond to your dispute. So that delivery confirmation receipt is an option that's offered by the post office. That's what I was referring to as certified mail. This is going to help you prove the date they receive your dispute letter. And in case uh, maybe they exceed the response period, typically they have 30 days to get back with you. If the creditor doesn't resolve your complaint, then you can ask that your letter of dispute be included as part of your credit file. Well, what, what exactly does that mean? Well, part of this is 
if the creditor or if the bureaus don't agree with your dispute, but they haven't actually responded to you, then your letter of dispute can be included with your credit file to simply say, hey, I'm disputing this. Now, I will say, if you're in pursuit of a mortgage loan, most of the time your mortgage loan is actually going to ask you to remove any disputes. So if you've disputed something and the creditor or the credit bureaus haven't removed it, sorry, Charlie, you're going to be asked to remove the disputes because mortgage underwriters don't typically approve mortgage loans if there's disputed info. So this is another reason why it's super important. You want to get this stuff resolved before you're ready to go take out credit. Now, there's another resource here that I am uh, really a big fan of, and that's annualcreditreport.com. So annualcreditreport.com is designed to help consumers receive a copy of their credit report annually. The challenge with that is it doesn't actually include scores. This is what it looks like. This is their website. So you can go on this website. It's a government-sponsored uh, website, and you can request your free report once a year. Okay, and it's and it is is brought to you by the three credit bureaus. I've used it personally myself. I do this at least once a year because you get your free copy of report every 12 months per each credit reporting company. Now, here's the challenge. What's going to happen is when you request this, if you want to see scores, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion are going to charge you to see your scores. And by the way, the scores that they show you are not going to be the same scores that a lender sees. So we have at my firm uh, actually come up with what I feel like is an even better solution uh, that we'd like to introduce you to, and that is our WaymakerCreditMyReport.com website, where you can take control of your credit repair pretty quickly and easily. Uh, it's all about creating and mailing out your dispute letters. You can do it super fast. Our system does it for you. You can sign up, dispute your accounts, uh, get your letters sent, and then you can follow up. You can deal with late payments, collections, charge-offs, medical debts. Uh, pricing is 40 bucks a month for your three bureau report subscription. And that actually gives you the same type of credit report that a lender would pull so that you're disputing the right information so that you actually see your scores. That's a, that's a really important thing, quite frankly, because a lot of times folks will come uh, to us and they'll say, well, my score on Credit Karma is X. Why was yours Z? Well, the difference between what you can see on a free resource like a Credit Karma or one of these others is, it's not actually the same data that a lender pulls. So if you use a system like what I'm referring to here, that's the short link to it, by the way, waymaker.link slash credit. You have the ability to go in and monitor your credit using this system and dispute uh, on your own using those resources. So just wanted to introduce that to you. But the bottom line is you want to check your credit report at minimum, the report from annualcreditreport.com once a year for mistakes. You want to make sure that those mistakes are being looked at and fixed as they need to be. And if you want to go to the next level and you're interested in looking at your real credit scores that a lender pulls and helping yourself to dispute anything that might need to be removed, check out our waymaker.link slash credit. That is our service. It's not a, it's, it's a, it's, it's not a mortgage service. It's a, it's a service that we offer through a third party and it might help you to monitor your credit and monitor your scores because when the day comes that you're interested in using your credit next, you wanna make sure that you don't have any mistakes. Quick recap, there are three reasons to check your report at least once a year. If you're looking for mistakes, you wanna fix the ones that could hurt your score. If you're ensuring that your credit information is up to date and you're guarding yourself against identity theft. In doing this, you're going to prepare yourself to have healthy credit, to have a great situation when the time comes to buy a home, buy an investment property, purchase a vehicle, et cetera and you're gonna be well on your way to a top tier credit score. Hey, if you've got any questions, please feel free to reach out. We would love to chat with you. So hit me up in the comments section, reach out to us on our website. We'd love to connect with you. And I wish you the very best in living your American dream as you work on credit and as you seek to understand how to build uh, the best financial situation for yourself.